All right, so we're pretty much finished with uh, anything that we need to do uh, with the parts on the truck because the truck's kind of sitting out there uh, in the elements. And now I've got everything pretty much to the point where I can just work under here under the carport and inside the garage and uh, do everything else I need to do. So let me get everything set up and then I'll show you uh, what my next plan is. So I'm gonna be making a gusset for this. And it's basically gonna effectively create a triangle. The gusset's gonna go from this edge right here to this edge right there, effectively creating uh, a triangle shape and adding some support because what I don't want to happen is for this to kind of bend upwards. And with as much welding as I'm gonna do there, because I can weld, because this little T-joint right here Right there, that's gonna get welded, and I even have just a touch on the back side here of material. It's really a bit of an outside corner joint, but there is a little bit of material lapping over. And you can see I've put some spot welds back there. So with as much welding, I don't think that that would be an issue, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and create one, and then we're gonna fancy it up a little bit. So uh, it cannot go, as much as I'd like it to go from edge to edge, it really can't because I'm going to need to have access to this area right here to pull the rubber supports through. There's a little nub on there that you pull through and that kind of retains it uh, in this bracket. So I got to have access there and then of course I have to have access right here for my uh, mounting hole likewise on this side. So the little gusset piece is going to go in between. And let's see, get a measurement here. So 23 inches. I've got 23 inches from the inside of each hole, not the center line, but the inside of each hole. So I'm gonna make my gusset 22 inches wide. That'll leave me a half inch of material on this side. In fact, actually I think I'm gonna cut it down a little bit more because there'll be a weld seam there because I'll make some, some little filler pieces to go there. So there will be a weld seam. I actually think I wanna make it a little bit narrower. So let's go, we'll go 21 and a half. We'll add another uh, quarter inch each side. So it'll be 21 and a half in length. And then this distance here, three and a half. Let me make sure this is all square, three and a half. So 21 and a half in length, three and a half in width. And then like I said, we'll, we'll do something to kind of fancy this up a little bit make it look a little bit better so let me get the jigsaw out and the rest of my material and make some cuts and uh, we'll start working on this piece so I've marked it out I changed the dimensions just a little bit more I said 21 and a half I dropped it down to 21 and a quarter because of those end caps that I'm going to be welding on so and then I, I marked this distance at three and three quarters to allow for that crummy cut with the jigsaw that I can clean up with the bandsaw because this is this is a sheared edge right there so that's a nice straight edge and you know I wish I could make a straight cut with the jigsaw and I've tried to build a fence on the material something to use with the jigsaw and it just never comes out straight the only way that I can get a nice straight cut is with the bandsaw and so this is certainly a slower method it's an extra step and it is a little bit wasteful but uh, the end product is much better so that's just uh, I'll have to play with it some more, but until I can figure out how to get a straight cut, uh, a really nice straight cut with the jigsaw, I'm just going to have to keep doing it this way. So let's get this piece cut out. Alright, well we got a little batch of rain coming through. Here's that top piece I was talking about. This piece is cut and uh, ready to get some fanciness to it. And right now I'm working on the little corner pieces, the little triangular corner pieces. I've got those two marked off and I'm gonna chop those up here in the uh, bandsaw. So let me get these done, and then we'll go do a little dry fit. All right, let's do a little bit of a dry fit here. Of course we got this long piece that we cut out, and we just cut out our two little end caps. So this is gonna go Roughly like this. I'm not going to measure it off right now. Like that. There's our end cap. 
Roughly like that. The other one on this side. And that's our little gusset piece. So, uh, so that's about ready to rock and roll. Uh, but like I said, we're going to do something fancy uh, to this piece right here. So let me go get my other tools and we'll get going on that. All right, so here's what I've done to this uh, piece of material here. I drilled basically 14 holes in it. And if you remember back, there was a video that I put together where I built a homemade hydraulic press. And I was using that for dimple dies. And I mentioned in that video that there was a project coming up where I wanted to use dimple dies. Well, this is that project. So I've got 14 holes here. I kind of did a little bit of a grid pattern. I didn't show you that because you could do it any way you want. But basically, we're going 18 inches. That's our dimension. And everything is basically inside those dimensions. And then, you know, half of 18, you know, there's, uh, you know, nine and then four and a half and then two and a quarter. And then we're basically three quarters of an inch of an inch from the bottom for these uh, two holes on these lines. So that's what I'm doing here. And we're going to break out that uh, that A-frame or that square frame uh, press that I got and uh, punch some dimple dies. But I got a few more holes here that I got to take out uh, to half inch. All right, guys, time for some speed holes. Now, unfortunately, there is some distortion that these create, so we'll have to kind of straighten that out a little bit. But so far, so good. Well, there we go. We got all 14 holes punched out. So, like I said earlier, it, it, it does kind of warp the material a little bit. You can see that, that crown in there. So, we'll just have to see if we can work that out a little bit. Usually, you can work it, you can work it out a little bit without bending the material too much. But generally what you have to do is just, when you're going to weld it, just clamp it down. And uh, that usually works pretty good. So, got that piece done. Okay, so. I added uh, a few more little dimpled holes. Three here in this top piece. There, there, and there. They're basically uh, halfway in between our bolt mounting locations. And then I also added some here on this portion of the bracket. These are really more just drainage holes because this is where our support structure is going to go. So this thing, I think we're just ready to go ahead and start welding. I can't think of any more fabrication uh, that needs to be done right now. Something might pop up. Well, we do, we do still have to drill and uh, cut holes, uh, drill holes and, and weld in the bungs on the uh, fan shroud, but uh, I think we're just ready to get welding. So, start with this. I had a couple of tack welds pop free, so we'll get those retacked and uh, we'll get this thing welded up.
Okay, so the primary structure here is all welded up. Did a fillet weld, kind of a T-joint right there. And then everything else was pretty much an outside corner joint. I did weld uh, the inside right there as well. And I could probably run it as is. I think it would be plenty strong enough uh, to run it just like this. But we already made this little brace, this little fancy piece here. So we'll go ahead and weld that in. And so I'm going to take it out in the driveway. I'm going to do a little bit of, uh, some of the weld is a little bit high. And I'd like to knock that down, get it a little bit flatter so that I can get a better fit for this piece when I go to weld this in. And I'll probably try and straighten this out a little bit. It's still a little wampus uh, from putting the dimple dies in. I bent it over my knee a little bit and got, uh, got it a little bit straighter. Uh, but it still needs to be straightened out a little bit more. Uh, but I can always clamp it. You know, clamp it down, put a, some beefy tacks on there, clamp the other end, and uh, you get the idea. So, let's go out in the driveway and uh, hit this with the grinder, probably with the little uh, electric DA sander, smooth some of these welds out a little bit, only between basically the areas where that piece is going to be mounted. So, let's go do that. So, I've got my weld smoothed out, everything's prepped uh, in between, you know, for welding in this little brace. Uh, section here and I left the uh, weld going out towards the edge I just wanted to clean it up here in the middle so I had a good surface good tight surface uh, to clamp this little brace into place and as you can see I've got it clamped uh, in a few areas and I'm probably actually going to do some very short little you know half inch long stitch welds near the clamps in between the clamps things like that uh, just to get it really held down because you can see right here this end is still sprung up so I really wanted to hold down really want my welds to hold while I reposition these clamps so let me get the welder fired up and we'll start laying some little stitches on here and then get the clamps out uh, reclamp it to the table and then we'll finish weld it support piece is basically finished we got a little bit of cleanup work we got to do kind of round off some edges and uh, uh, just do a little bit of a cleanup more aesthetic work than anything else so we're gonna move on to putting the bungs in the fan shroud so remember earlier we marked and I even center punched uh, the holes in the fan shroud so we got three holes one there there and there there's the bung one more time it's an inch in diameter across the top here it's got a little shouldered area this diameter down here is three quarters of an inch. So we gotta drill three holes at three quarters of an inch. So let me go grab the drill and uh, we'll punch those holes out. One quick thing I wanted to note here, I took about a quarter of an inch off the bottom of this little bung. And here's one that I haven't cut. And there you can kind of see the difference there. And the reason for that is when I put these in the fan shroud, in their holes, this one's uncut. It's real close. It, it would be very, very close uh, to the core of the radiator, to the fins. So that's why 
I cut it down a little bit. We stick this one in there. You kind of look at it in profile, you can't see it. So this gives us at least a quarter of an inch of clearance uh, between the fins uh, and the bottom of the bung here. So let me go ahead and cut the other two and then we'll be ready to clean up and uh, do some more welding. So the fan shroud has been prepped. Took a little bit of extra prep on this because if you remember we uh, we spray painted the fan shroud with some high temp uh, gloss clear coat. So I had to really work at it to get all that paint off of here. But everything's ready to go. Got two of my bungs clamped down. Get the other one installed, put the clamp on that one. And uh, then we'll put a couple of tacks on each bung and uh, then we'll weld them in. Not too bad. These are kind of tricky to weld, uh, in my opinion. I'm finding them a little bit tricky. So there's a little bit of a learning curve there. But overall, not bad. So I'm just letting this thing kind of cool down. It's just so it doesn't get all warpy on me. Uh, let it cool down while it's still clamped in place. So uh, that's about it. We're about ready to go mount this stuff back in the truck. All right, time to do a test fit. Place. I'm just using this upper radiator hose to, as a brace to kind of hold it in place while I get everything else set up. There we go. Can't forget the little pads. All right, everything fits. The holes line up pretty well. I just need to drill the little holes in the two ends here so I can pop those little uh, rubber isolators, get those held in place. And I think we're about ready to start cleaning things up and uh, maybe throw some paint on this. I'm not sure, I, I haven't decided if I wanna paint this yet or not. Uh, the fan shroud certainly needs to be uh, sanded down and, and touched up again. And I'll think about painting this in the meantime. Uh, but let's go ahead and get those two holes drilled and start cleaning up the fan shroud. So I did decide to paint this radiator support bracket that I made. And I figured since I painted I might as well go a few extra steps and make it look a little bit better. So I sprayed it with this Duplicolor filler primer. There was some fairly deep scratches in there from uh, grinding on this with, with the uh, angle grinder. I think it's an 80 grit flap wheel on my angle grinder right now. I was using that to kind of clean up holes and uh, smooth out edges and things like that. So there were some scratches in there, so I just hit it with the filler primer first and then kind of sanded it a little bit. I just used a red Scotch Brite pad, uh, which is a fairly fine, I think they equate it to roughly 300 grit sandpaper. So that's what I did, and I got most of those deep scratches out of there. So I'm going to paint it, I'm going to use flat black. This is pretty much my go-to flat black. It's the Rust-Oleum Barbecue Black. Uh, it's good 
up to 1200 degrees and I've, I've put this on exhaust manifolds headers all kinds of stuff and I've had it last for years uh, in this case it's not going to get anywhere near 1200 degrees uh, but it's still it's it's a really nice really flat black paint so that's really the reason I'm using it here so as for the fan shroud I just kind of scrubbed it down got that discoloration out of there as much as I could you can kind of still see a little bit of it in there I'm not going to sweat that too much and I'm just using the exact same uh, high temp gloss clear coat uh, that I used on it the first time so I'm just going back with that same stuff well, I thought I'd give you a closer look at these little brackets these lifting brackets that I made uh, for the bottom of the radiator these are to lift it up off the floor of the core support a little bit uh, to get a little bit uh, better airflow through the radiator and like I mentioned earlier I didn't make a video series on how I fabricated these uh, there's a, a bunch of photos on my Facebook page that you can go check out but I just took these out to put a little paint down there I had some bare metal so that one's already been reinstalled so I just wanted to put some paint down there to prevent some rust so that's it it's a real simple little aluminum bracket and uh, let me get this one put in and then we'll be ready to uh, put our radiator and our uh, new radiator mount back in place okay time to reinstall everything Drop the radiator back into place. That's good. Sit square on the pads. We're going to use our radiator, upper radiator hose to kind of help hold everything in place. All right. So, we got this piece. I went ahead and installed the little rubber isolators on each end. Now I'm gonna, I tried to order some new ones, but there's like three part numbers and they wouldn't, they didn't have any dimensions that they could give me. When I called the vendor and asked them to talk to them about it, they didn't have any dimensions that they could give me. So I don't know which ones I need to order. So I'll have to do a little bit more research and order those in the future. But for now, we'll just go ahead and get everything installed. All that's lining up real good. All right, let's start a few bolts. All right, so I thought I was completely finished with the install and I got to looking at things and there's one thing that I want to do. Uh, this wire, this mainly can goes uh, across the core support here across the radiator over to the passenger side it's mostly for headlights the market lights and uh, there's a, a wire in here to the relay here for the electric fan I want to keep this wire from kind of flopping around I'm afraid it's gonna rub the paint off of, of the uh, new uh, upper support that we made uh, that just may be the way it is but nonetheless I've got a little cushion clamp here I'm gonna wrap this around the wire I'm going to use two of these one on kind of each end of the support to sort of hold that wire this bundle of wires really in place so to hold it down to the support bracket I'm going to be using a rib nut it's a 10 24 rib nut so it's a number 10 screw coarse thread 24 threads per inch so I've got a hole I got a center punch there we're going to drill a hole and uh, then we'll install our little nut zert. For this nut zert, I'm using a 1964th drill bit. So I think I mentioned this in the uh, coolant reservoir build, but I found it to be a pretty good idea to put a little bit of red Loctite on these nut certs just to make sure that they stay in place and don't spin.
All right. I think we're all done. All right, guys, let's finish out this video. So the number one reason why I lifted my radiator up was because my fill cap here was at or even below the water outlet here on the engine. And what that caused was an air pocket to form uh, in the uh, upper radiator hose and in the top of the radiator. So I had air in my cooling system, which is something that you don't want to have. So by lifting it up that inch and a half, I have now put uh, the filler cap, uh, you know, a solid inch and a half to even two inches uh, above the water outlet on the engine. So uh, I've double checked it. I don't have any air in my cooling system at all. So, and since we lifted it, this all this was the original radiator uh, support bracket, upper support bracket. This would no longer work. And then, I, of course, I mentioned uh, after the uh, fan shroud build uh, that I wanted some more aluminum projects. So uh, I jumped in. We made the uh, coolant reservoir down here, and then of course we made this upper support. So. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, again, it's it's not weld porn. I'm still practicing. I'm still learning uh, the TIG welding in general, and uh, spe specifically TIG welding on aluminum. But I'm happy with it. So, a uh, couple other things. I need to go back to the hardware store. These uh, little machine screws that I got for these cushion clamps to hold this wire. They're only a half inch long. I thought that would be enough. But I'm really only engaging about the bottom two or three threads uh, on these bolts uh, or the top two or three threads on those nut zerts, however you want to look at it. So I need to go back to the hardware store, pick up some three quarter inch long uh, fasteners and that uh, then I'll get full thread contact uh, into those rib nuts. I was a little hesitant about painting it, uh, but I, I've come around and, I, and I'm real happy with it. It really makes these stainless button head fasteners kind of pop out. I think it looks pretty good. And, you know, again, the welding, it's, it, again, it's not weld poured, but uh, it's solid. It's not going anywhere. And it looks halfway decent. So we'll just come up with a few more aluminum projects and get a little bit more practice. But uh, in the meantime, that's it for this video. So I appreciate you guys watching. If you want to see uh, all my videos, I post them all on my Facebook page, including all of the pictures. So I generally put a handful of pictures here at the end of my videos uh, I kind of pick and choose some of the best ones but every single picture that I took for this project uh, is on my Facebook page so that's facebook.com slash milk crate 82 and I think that's it so I appreciate you guys watching and uh, if you haven't subscribed please subscribe mm -hmm.